Hi, we're going to continue with uh, some videos on some things that make us trading decisions. Uh, if you like this kind of video, please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. As always, we'd really appreciate some feedback. Uh, today, we're going to go over analyzing AMM pools. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more technical in nature, but hopefully um, you'll be able to get a little bit of an insight on how we assess whether we would go into a AMM pool stake and farm uh, or not. And today we'll be looking at 50-50 uh, pools, uh, and especially we'll look at ones on, on uh, Pancake uh, Finance. So 50-50 pools here. So let's get started. Um, this is a, a site that we brought up earlier today um, on Pancake Swap. Um, and what we're looking specifically are the farms and the APR that's provided uh, by, um, by getting farming rewards or staking rewards in Cake. Um, and we're going to look in particular uh, two, um, two particular farms. Uh, what, mainly this BUSD BNB, which shows an APR of around 30.54%. Uh, the liquidity is quite big at $300 million. So it means quite a few people are actually in this pool. Uh, also, we'll be looking at, um, by relation, we'll be looking at this USDT BNB pool, which has even a lower APR um, with some liquidity. Uh, given the fungibility or the similarity between USDT and BUSD, uh, the fact that you know one has a higher APR uh, than the other is also confusing in, in itself. So. Uh, what are what are AMM pools? Well, AMM pools are automated market maker liquidity pools or AMM uh, LP pools. And so, uh, what happens is is that uh, as price of one asset versus another moves, the portfolio of these two assets, in the case in Pancake Swap, is moving to make sure that they're balanced, that they always stay 50-50. What happens in this is, is that basically these pools will inevitably suffer from what's called impermanent loss unless um, the prices completely mean uh, revert back to its original state. Uh, and, and in doing so, there is some slippage, especially versus just holding these two um, assets um, without putting it into an LP pool. So in the next uh, slide, we're going to go over how uh, these uh, how, what kind of uh, profit and loss or slippage that you may see as the price of, in this case, BNB, BUSD would go up or down in price. So what we can tell here is we've modeled out a little bit, uh, just up and below maybe about 10% of, uh, of a price of about 252. We've modeled this, uh, uh, I think, yesterday or so. Um, the price of where it is doesn't make, really make too much difference. It's more of the relative change to the price. And as we can see, uh, basically versus holding a 50-50 portfolio, you would end up with less value uh, on the way down. The reason why is, is that you are actually buying more and more and more BNB as it goes down using the US dollars, hence your dollar cost averaging down uh, by using the, U the BUSD or the USDT that you've put in. On the upside, you're actually dollar costing your way up in a way in selling the BNB. So you're selling little bits and little bits, and thus you're participating less in BNB's upside as you go higher. So you end up actually losing out versus, again, holding out on both of these um, uh, assets uh, just as is. So when we look at this relative performance, uh, we see a nice, what's called a con, um, you're actually a concave or a short convexity type of curve. And what does this mean? Well, let's look at the next page. Uh, I took this uh, page from uh, optiontradingtips.com. And again, when you look at this curve here, um, you have a very similar shape to what looks like a short straddle. So while a AMM pool isn't exactly a, a short straddle, um, it does exhibit a portfolio of short options. So in order to basically figure out that your AMM pool is paying you enough, we should actually figure out some kind of model to decide um, you know, whether the volatility of your pair um, is actually worth uh, the staking rewards. So if you, if you are getting too little staking rewards for something that moves a lot, then it's not worth it. If you're getting a lot of staking uh, rewards, 
um, for the lack of movement in something, then it becomes more and more worth it to go into the pool. So what we're going to do is we're going to, so what we need to figure out now is obviously uh, how much, uh, uh, how to make this decision. So uh, the big important question is how much APR is needed in the farm to overcome um, impermanent loss risk. And this, as I said before, depends on the volatility of the asset pair. So how do we find the volatility? Well, we're going to do it in a little bit of a DIY um, and calculating in Excel. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, what I've done is I've gone to coinmarketcap.com and I've basically copied and pasted this data for about six months of BNB USD prices since BUSD is pretty much a USD proxy. And I'm going to put this into Excel and really just calculate the annualized volatility. Uh, when we go into Excel, here's some Excel instructions. After I've copied and pasted this data in, I've eliminated everything except for the date and the closing price here. Next, uh, I've actually added a column, or I'm going to make a column. It's, I'm going to copy and paste um, every row or every cell down here um, and with this equation, which is just a, a change. And then what I'm going to do after I've made that row is I'm going to ask for a standard deviation of the sample for about 10 cells or about 10 days. <clears throat> so I'm going to be able to get a rolling, kind of a rolling 10-day uh, sample size of the standard deviation. So uh, not too hard. Uh, and then we're going to continue on to basically find out. And we get an image of what the annualized volatility is going to look like. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to find the volatility that's annualized by simply looking at the square root of the number of days in a year, which is 365, and then we'll multiply it by the standard deviation. So this uh, column E will basically show our annualized volatility. Uh, if you're using something like a Bloomberg, this is effectively using the HVG uh, function. Next, let's chart it. I've actually cop I've actually brought the uh, in a different column. I've brought the dates um, in, in column A over to column H, and then the column E, the results of the volatility annualized, to column I, so that I can have a nice, easy way of building a chart. As you can tell, for BNB USD, the vo annualized volatility has been quite um, large, actually, at one sixty six. Uh, percent on an annualized uh, basis. I mean, but comparatively, the for example, the S and P index probably rarely goes above uh, twenty percent, uh, except for the most wildest of times, say like in March of twenty twenty or during the Lehman crisis. Um, so, so this moves are are quite uh, large um, in general versus any other standard asset class. Um, you know. If you look at generally foreign exchange like the yen dollar, these numbers are can easily be in the single digits. So let's graph this out. And you can see at what level we'll be happy to bet the under. So as we know, we are shorting um, straddles or shorting a portfolio of options. So what, what that means is also you're shorting a volatility level. So you have to think at what level am I going to be happy to be short or betting that the that the volatility figure, uh, which is this line here, will be under. So if you sold here um, for a time period of, of just this period, you would have, because this number, the realized number would have been a lot higher than where you sold, you would have ended up losing a lot of money. Of course, if you were able to sell way up here, then, and it came down, you would end up making quite a bit of money in the options world. So we're betting on this number. Um, is it safe to, to bet that this number will be lower than this bar or this bar, for example? So I've taken a rough measure that this, this um, move of BNB upwards was a kind of a one-time movement, um, a little bit of an aberration. But yet, uh, because it's already moved, we expect a little bit of heightened uh, volatility for a while. Um, I've just got a finger in the air here and said, OK, maybe I'll be happy to um, bet that the number would eventually drop, um, or at the most worst case scenario would hover around this 165 level. So now we have a level of showing us what kind of risk, uh, a number representing risk that we're willing to underwrite. 
Next, uh, we're going to think, is the APR in the farm worthwhile? So how much total APR do we need for this um, to be in this pool to be worthwhile? Um, are we compensated for our risk? So we have a model uh, that we use in-house. Uh, we'll create a matrix uh, later. So up here we have a there's an option portfolio modeling. Uh, we'll post a matrix uh, on the website at some point in the future, and maybe we'll actually add it to a couple of other sites uh, to for you to have a quick um, idea of whether it's worth it or not, or you have a very good idea whether we think it's worth it or or not at the at the very least. So what we'll look at is we're looking at basically the vol the annualized volatility here, which is about one hundred sixty five. That's the number I mentioned before in the previous uh, slide. And it will calculate based on pricing this portfolio of options how much we need on an annualized basis um, to be compensated enough to deal with this um, uh, a slippage, or you could say this negative convexity from um, uh, from the AMM pool uh, uh, loss. And I, we've calculated that for this BNB BUSD pool, we would need over 200% annualized to compensate us for the risk that we're actually taking, um, which is um, an extreme deviation from this roughly 30.5% um, that is currently given in this farm. So uh, while you know we do like the pancake uh, BSC uh, uh, side and, and, and you know we've participated in some things before, Clearly for this one, um, you no one is being compensated enough to take on the risk of the swings in the price in the BUSD BNB pair. Um, so if you are in this pair, you should uh, probably, uh, it's worthwhile to explore other pairs within Pancake or some other AMM pool um, and, and find some greener pastures. At this rate, you are definitely not compensated um, enough to take on the risk of the price movements. Um, again, keep in touch with our website, uh, maybe, uh, and our Twitter, and you know we'll see how we can post a, a matrix uh, for everyone to use to have a better idea of whether the APRs are going to be worthwhile. Um, if you have any other comments or any ways to improve, um, you know what we're going to post or, or have your own calculations and such, uh, we are very open to hear it on on the comments section. Okay. Well, uh, thank you again for joining us, and um, you know we we'll we hope to uh, catch you again next time. Okay. Thanks.